parents were going through a real bad divorce, and my dad kind of threw me an X-Men comic and said, here, read this. He didn't want me to hear their arguments and get the fighting. And it was an X-Men annual number nine. And it grabbed me. It was, at that point, I knew when I was like nine years old, I'm gonna do this. And uh, come to find out many years later when I started doing it, my dad wanted to always draw comics growing up. And so I'm living his dream mm -hmm. in my dream. Uh, but we got, I was nine years old. It was Chris Claremont, Art Adams. And I just started emulating every artist, every great artist I find. I would trace their stuff as a kid. And I, and I, I learned to draw from tracing over comic books. I think a lot of artists actually learn to do that too. I mean, they, they learn that way by tracing their favorites. Man, that's that's a really interesting way to uh, to, to get into art and to start doing it. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know where to go from here. I, I guess the next question I've got is, uh, you know, it, it's more interesting how I got in the industry than that. See, now I'm now I'm really interested. So, how how did you get into the industry? Oh, um, I actually got in the industry back in the 90s in 19, uh, 1997 I was working with Quantum Comics out of Las Vegas and they filed bankruptcy and the industry it collapsed and you know kind of went kaput and I got through it went through a divorce and that kind of stuff you know like everybody uh, and then I went and got into refinery work cut to 15 years later I'm much older I'm with my, my with my new wife I'm working in the refinery industry, kind of left art behind. Always dabbled in it, always talked about it. And then I had a heart attack. I was 37 years old, had a heart attack and a stroke. And I couldn't work. I was laid up in the hospital. My, my kids, my daughters will tell you, they, I look like cyborg. I had so many wires coming out of me. I had the, you know, breathing tubes, you name it, I had it on me. It was a scary period of my life because I couldn't do anything. And I thought I was gonna die. And my wife goes, well, it's time to basically shit or get off the pot. And she goes, go for it, just go for it. Uh, and I was so, in, at the time I was antisocial, didn't want social media, I was really recluse, never wanted to leave the house. And I got on Facebook and I saw an independent publisher, uh, uh, Tony Cottrell, Advent, Advent Comics out of New Jersey. And I commented on this post, how much I like this work. And uh, he was like, hey, I like your work too. Will you do a pinup? I'm like, yeah, sure, I'll do a pinup. I thought it was a fan thing, so I did it. That led to a cover, and then led to character designs, and more covers, and interiors. Three and a half years later, I stopped working with him. It, but it literally took a heart attack, and me almost dying for me to get in this industry. And I haven't looked back. I haven't worked a normal job ever since. Um, I've had a chance in, in my career to to work on one of my one of my greatest inspirations of my childhood heroes and when uh, it was awesome so I can't complain I mean I'm living my dream I go I go to shows I work in comics um, I mean I love conventions I love doing commissions and stuff but to me sequential work pages doing comic books is what I've always wanted to do I never wanted to be a convention artist I wanted to be a comic book artist and I am one and I and I love being that. I love having that title of comic book artist. So it's cool. Man, that that's really really awesome. That's a very interesting way. <laughs> like that that's crazy way to get in. I'm sorry. Do you need the seat? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it's. Go sit up. Go sit on my bed. Uh, and so. Man, that is a really interesting way to get into the industry. I told you. It's like... I told you, it's not what you hear every day. I mean, no. I almost died and I got into comics. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's like, oh, how'd you get into comics? Well, I was exposed to it as a kid and I loved drawing and my parents pushed me and they exposed me to it and that's it. Not me. I, I had to almost kill myself. <laughs> I was over 300 pounds at five foot three. Mm -hmm. um, blood pressure's up to 220 over 101. And uh, I had I had a heart attack and three strokes, and I had three strokes in the hospital. I mean, literally almost died, and it was game changing. And I'm grateful for it. I'm so glad it happened, because now I don't take anything for granted, man. I, mean, I get every page I do, every image I do, I give it. If you buy a twenty dollar image from me, I'm gonna give you a hundred dollar image. If you buy a hundred dollar image, I'm gonna give you a five thousand dollar image, because I'm not gonna take 
this thing for granted. I mean, that's why I like being who I am. And, I, and if I ask me, they go, oh, how do you like your job? Man, I'm just a kid from Baytown, Texas. That's all I am. I'm never going to be anything bigger than that. I'm just, a, I'm just kind of a good old country boy. You know, I'm just my wife's husband, my kid's dad, and the guy next door. That's all I am. Man, that, that's, that's real inspiring. And uh, I guess what I'd like to ask you next is what, what are... Uh, what are some of the, the commission pieces that you've really enjoyed doing? I remember earlier you, uh, you mentioned, maybe it wasn't a commission piece, but you uh, did a Darth Maul piece. Yes. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the work I've done over the years, have, I have, I've taken a lot of pride in, and some of them I just, I haven't. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, no, you can't enjoy, you're not gonna enjoy everything you draw. Some people want the oddest things, and you're like, oh, I don't want to ever get to it, and I delay it, delay it, delay it. Um, but it's the ones that that I'm like, sorry, I've got a piece of hair from my mustache. Um, it's the ones that I'm able to cut loose and kind of use my creativity on. Um, there it is. Uh, I think one of my one of my favorites was the uh, Venom Gwen I did. I did a spider. I did a Venom Gwen that I got to create from scratch. That was a lot of fun because I got to create them all new. Um, I did uh, a, a commission. I did. Let's see, I'm telling you, that's a hard question. Favorite commission piece because I've done some really cool ones. Uh, I stumped him, ladies yeah, he, and gentlemen. He really did. He stumped me. Uh, <laughs> Wow, um, I think it was, uh, I did a throwback Wolverine that I really liked a lot. The colors popped on it. Um, I enjoyed that. I, I, uh, I, I did, man, man, that's, actually, you know what, my favorite piece, my favorite piece, one I didn't know want to part with. After I did it, I didn't want to part with it. It was actually a Batman, and the reflection, the the shadow of Batman. He was holding this cow, and he's looking up the camera. And I got the inspiration from Lee Baramello for Mayho, uh, and it was his shadow was the Joker, and it, it was in black and white except for the Joker's smile was in red. It was it, it was against a brick wall. It was in gray tones except for that red smile, and it was. Sick, dude. It was just, I, I loved it. It just kind of came together, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to give it up. I mean, it took forever for me to give it away to give it away because I didn't want to give it get to the client. But yeah, it, it is what they paid for, and uh, I actually started it as a as a piece that I stopped because I didn't want to finish it because I liked it. And the guy was like, "No, I want that. Come, on, I want to commission you to finish it. Finish it for me." Okay. You know, and then I finished it, and I was like, "Oh." I hate that it's good. <laughs> yeah. I don't mind giving away something that's bad. Yeah, give away it. I'll start something else. Um, but when it's really good. Oh. It fell. We're good. All right, we're good. I kind of like this pieces that I'm like, wow, did I really do that? Did I, did I take myself to that level? Um, and, and there, as an artist, you got to push yourself to that limit. You gotta, you really gotta say, you know what? Swallow my pride and go for it. If I fail, I fail. If I not, I, I'm not. Like color, I hated color until recently. You see, give me a panic attack. I mean, I, I was, I, I was an art. I would try. I tried to go to art school. Believe it or not. Uh, I was, at, when I got into comics, I was like, well, I'm gonna go to art school and learn what I don't know. And uh, I left because I, the instructors were kind of asking me, hey, am I teaching this right? And I was like, no, Art Institute of Houston was not for me. I'm not gonna do it. Um, and I was in Color Fundamentals and I had a panic attack. I, I literally freaked out. They, they almost called an ambulance. They freaked out. And then uh, I was doing a Spider Gwen piece and I kind of just went for it with color. And I was like, oh, I screwed up, I screwed up. And, it, and I didn't. And then I started doing more. And then flesh tones kind of gave me a panic attack. And then I did flesh tones and I was like, wow, I can actually do it. And it was just like taking my time and learning the process of it. And it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun, a lot of uh, hit and miss. And uh, 
and I'm glad I pushed myself to that area because now I'm not so afraid of it. Uh, yeah. Now I'm ready. I'm com more comfortable, and I'm ready to take challenge the next thing and go to the next step. That's really awesome. And uh, I, I talked to you a little bit earlier, and uh, you are actually a recently married man. And uh, you mind sharing the story of uh, of the the special day with us? Oh, I, don't, I don't mind at all. Um, the uh, the day took it actually took part at Alamo City Comic Con on uh, during, on that Saturday during the show. Uh, it was all her idea. It was her idea. It, uh, that was the best part. It was last year at Alamo City. She comes up to me right after the show. She says, "Babe, let's get married here at Alamo City this year." I was like, "Yeah, okay, whatever." <laughs> Then we went to Heart of Texas Comic Con, and she was serious. Let's get married at Alamo City. So I called Apple De La Puena and I asked him to be my best man, and he was like, yeah, of course I will. I'm like, awesome, man, that's cool. And Apple, the promoter of Alamo City, decided to be my best man. And what we didn't know is that he was, like, hooking up everything. He kept us in the dark completely. Wouldn't take meetings with us, wouldn't talk to us. He kept us so in the dark that we got there on Thursday, freaked out because she had her wedding dress I had my 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 wet wet my vest I was wearing and she didn't even let me wear nightwing blue yeah yeah I was wearing the black pants and the, the baby blue vest and my nightwing cap dude I was like <laughs> dude what a wife dude that's awesome yeah so we get there and we're in the dark everybody's telling us we're getting a mirror here we're getting married there different rooms and we had no idea what we were doing and where we were going with it and uh finally the night before our wedding, there was a rumor that they were going to have a party, and we're like, yeah, okay, whatever. We were never told anything about it. Cut to 7.45. The show ended at 8 o'clock that night. We literally get one of his one of his little minions, and that's how I only way you can say it. He comes to our table, and he goes, you're requested on the second floor at 10 o'clock. Don't make us come find you. And we're like, what is going on? <laughs> we have no clue. And we get there, and we... We get there to, we have dinner, we get there, and we couldn't get in. So we're outside of this party that's going on, and we're like, Apple, you're supposed to be here, we can't even get in. We're, what is going on? He's like, oh, tell them you're, you're the people getting married. They know. Apple, that, that didn't work. He was like, oh, I'll be right there. So he came down, he let us in, and then everybody knew we were getting married. And we were like, wow, it was cool, man. Uh, we, we had drinks and uh, partied with a lot of the celebrities and a lot of the artists that I've known over the years. And, and uh, we, we, they, they're like a family to us. Uh, they really are. And they were excited that we were going to do it at the wedding. And Apple was excited. And uh, unfortunately, Apple didn't get a chance to take part in the wedding. He was picking up uh, director Robert Rodriguez at the airport. And, but uh, a friend of mine, Roselle Rodriguez, and if you don't know who that is, check him out. Check him out. He goes by the name Hellraise. He has, he, he's a war fighters, he's a veteran, he does a lot of things for PTSD. Uh, so Rizal stepped in and we had uh, our friend Manu Bennett, you know, Deathstroke um, from, uh, from Arrow. He was actually one of my groomsmen and yeah, he held my, he held my uh, vows for me and, and he was up there with me as we were getting married and shared our day. I mean, like he shut down this table that day to come uh, be in our wedding. Yeah. And, and a lot of the, the artists did, and, and they wanted to be there for us. And I said they were a family, and and uh, they they really made that day exceptional. But Apple really went out of his way because he was he he did everything on his own and didn't tell anybody. He sent everybody he sent us all in different directions, so that he knew exactly what was going to happen, but only him mm -hmm. until we got married. And it was such a shocker, and it, it was such a surprise that I can't put, I can't say thank you enough because it was just awesome. Um, but I, it was her idea and uh, mm -hmm. that, that was the cool part. And uh, she bought me a, 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 a Superman ring for my wedding band yeah. that actually has, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't wear it, I forgot it. It actually, it's actually engraved in Kryptonian. Yeah. And I was like, dude, she's, a, she's cool. I mean, she's my best friend. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, she's my manager and she, I couldn't ask for a better partner. Um, and she and she's the one that really tells me, hey, when I don't draw, she's like, what's wrong? Yeah. She pushes the career. Um, when I was scared to audition for a character, that uh, she was like, you've got to audition. you got to go for it. you got to go for it. And, and matter of fact, I'm going to tell you about that. Um, when I was working with Advent Comics uh, a few years ago, well, about, uh, a year and a half, <coughs> about a year and a half ago, 
we got the permission to use the Nexus from Mike Barron and Steve Ruth. I auditioned eight times. They kept saying, no, nope, we don't want it. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. We don't want them. We don't want to use them. And finally, I got mad. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this piece. Send it to them. They don't like it. They can kiss my butt. And they bought it. They got it. I got the job. And I did this triple gatewall cover, which I didn't know had the Micronauts on it also. So in my short span career, I've got a chance to draw the Micronauts and the Nexus. And the Nexus was all one of my all-time favorite characters. And, well, and I never saw it in print at all and it's still waiting to be published um, and I saw Mike Barron last year at Alamo City and I walked up to him and I introduced myself and uh, I showed him the work he was oh yeah I know this yeah yeah I love your work it's beautiful and I was like wow it was actually le legit and and um, you know I mean I, you, you meet some people they always say don't meet your heroes because they're gonna let you down uh, my, my first year at Alamo City I sat right across from my personal hero James O'Barr and I love the guy's work. He's an inspiration to me. And I gave him a crow print I did, and I thought I offended him. And he didn't have enough work with him. He sold out in like the first two hours of him being there. And he kept, people kept buying the crow from me across, right across from him, and he would only sign it if I signed it. And he was a great guy. And so far in this industry, none of my heroes have let me down. Dale Adams gives me career advice. I mean, I grew up reading Neil Adams when I was, a kid and now I see my shows like hey how's, how's the career going yo know, how you doing what's this and that and this and he pushes my career and, and I'm like wow I mean if you told me that when I was 12 years old I would have told me I was lying yeah. I mean and and it's like I'm living my I really am living my dream it's like I, I feel like I'm gonna wake up anytime now um and so because of that because I, I know that I mean one day one day it was here and one and next day it can be gone yeah and because of that, the, the because of the heart attack, I know that I'll never look at myself as anything else other than that just the kid next door. Yeah. I mean, anybody can really do this job. You got to have the passion, the love, the desire to really go for it. And any artist out there, I would tell them, you know, if you have a desire to do this, the best thing you can do is just they they say, and when in doubt, whip it out, pull out your portfolio, get shut down. I've got doors slammed in my face left and right, and a lot of them opened up. And now positive things are starting to happen to me. But I guess there's I guess there's a buzz about me in the industry. I don't know. I don't know because <laughs> uh, I'm not that part of the industry. I'm kind of just the artist. Uh, but um, I got some stuff going on with some major publishers uh, and some some other publisher. Another pub, big publisher wants my work, and I'm like, I, I don't know what I did. I, I'm like I said, I just I kind of feel I'm the a kid in a small town. Yeah. You know. I'll never look at myself in any way different. I'm very humbled by by all of this. Um, I never knew people liked my work until a kid bought a piece from me. And and then, uh, matter of fact, the, the, here's an interesting story. First piece ever sold was an Undertaker portrait. And a kid waited a half hour to get it signed. I was talking to uh, Ken, Ch Ken Chu and Art Tiber. And we're just, you know, going back and forth. And this kid waited a half hour. And I walked over there and I gave him the original instead of him because he waited. And and it meant so the kid broke down like in tears because he I gave him the original. And to me, that kind of showed me that people really like my work. And and I, and maybe I do have a calling for this. And from that point on, I mean I I, I like being affordable for families. I have a family myself. And uh, I I don't I'm really, I, I don't want to be that guy that takes us for granted. Yeah. Because there's so much competition out there. I always want to be humble. Always want to be nice. Always want to be myself. And and, and I, I want to be approachable. No matter what I draw, no matter who I'm working with, I'm just always going to be me. And I it will always be me. I mean, I, I mean, if you know me now, you'll know me. If I'm working on DC, if I'm working at Marvel, or working at Valiant, wherever. You'll, you'll, if you're my friend now, you're my friend then. That, that's just who I am. Because I'm not, like I said, I'm just a kid in a small town. If it wasn't me, I'd ride a, I'd, I'd ride a horse everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got uh, one more question for you. Yeah. And that is, where can someone find you on the internet if they want to get in contact with you, if they want to see your work, if they want to buy your work? Where on the internet can they do that? 
don't look for me. The government's watching. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, no, uh, uh, look for me at uh, Brian A. Salinas on Facebook. That I administer my own page. You'll see a picture of me, or you'll see a picture of my art. Um, but that that is my Facebook page. My uh, people are like, well, I don't want to friend your Facebook page. Friend it. I don't have fr- I don't have fans. I have friends. Yeah. And and I always look at it that way. I people ask me to start an artist page. I won't do it because you, you like their page, but they never interact with you. And I like mm-hmm. interaction. I like talking to people. Uh, on Twitter, I'm at uh, Brian Salinas22. Uh, I don't do I don't really do Periscope too much because yeah. uh, I'm not really a picture kind of guy. <laughs> uh, uh, that's why I don't like facing the camera too much. No, no. Uh, but if I ran Periscope, I'd be on there for like five hours talking, just rambling and crap. You know, they're like, they're like you got to get off Periscope. Periscope would call me like, dude, you're banned. I'm like, no, no. Uh, Try me. Yeah, I probably, I probably would ban me for talking too much shit. Yeah. Um, I, I, I uh, but I will tell you this. Um, I, I do have a more, I do have a moral obligation to my art. Uh, I make everything uh, as PG and as fan friendly as possible because uh, I grew up in this industry as a kid, and to me, this is still a kid's industry. You kids love this stuff. And if you can't be, if you can't be, if a kid can't, if a kid can't look at your work, then wait, well, really, come on, you gotta, you gotta have fans, young and old. And if an, if an adult can't appreciate your work for it being clean, because you want to be appealing to the families, then they're not really a fan. Yeah. There, you know. And so, I like doing, I like doing stuff. And plus, my kids, they love my work. And if I can't show my 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 my, my daughters and my son that stuff, uh, it's just not worth it. So. And uh, I guess very, very, very last question. Uh, if they contact you uh, through various uh, media, uh, you know, Facebook, email, and such, uh, do you do commissions for people? I do do commissions. Um, I, I do. I do commissions. I do. I do uh, sketchbooks. If, yeah, if you're like, hey, I want a sketchbook cover from you. Tell me the sketchbook cover you want. I'll see if I can locate the book in my inventory. If I have it, then I do. If I don't. I have a, and just get it from Diamond, and you just pay the you just pay the cost. Um, but I do do commissions, and I, I love doing off the wall characters. Um, matter of fact, I I, uh, I pre comic book day, this guy was like, I want something you've never seen before. I said, Ooh, get me excited! And he ordered a space cabbie from DC Comics, and I'm like, space cabbie? I haven't seen space cabbie since like 1986. He's like, wow! And so he's like, how do you want to do it? It's like, oh, I'm gonna do Space Cabbie on Mars in the old Mad Max movie poster style. I love doing obs- just just the weirdest characters. Um, like I did a, a guy ordered a scuttlebutt, the ship from Beta Ray Bill. I'm like, why are you ordering just a scuttlebutt? But that's what he wanted. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, you can't, can't complain. Um, but yeah, I, I love doing commissions um, and I will do original character art. If you want, if you if you're like, hey, I have a design, and I and I've always wanted it drawn, I have no problem doing that. And um, I, I I say I'm expensive. Some people would say I'm not. I mean, most people would say I'm not because I I can really kind of stay under the price range. But your first your first time you buy something from me, I you charge the average, and then my prices go down because I I want to show you that I'm worth every cent. And you may have to wait a little bit, and because I I, I do work during the week, uh, my commissions are on the weekends, and it's it, it's kind of it's kind of weird. I never thought I'd be like that, but now I you know I got pages due, and I got deadlines to meet, and then I work a full time job. Actually, it's funny. Uh, I always wanted to, wanted to work in comics and a comic shop, yeah. and now I work in a comic shop full time on top of drawing comics. <laughs> so I draw comics at the comic shop and do commissions at the comic shop there there in Houston. And uh, you mind if I give him a shout out? Uh, no. uh, if you're in Houston, go to uh, go check us out at West Watchtower Comics at Westheimer and Derry Ashford. We're a new shop there in the Houston area, about about 15 minutes away down the street from a very popular, another very popular store, which I'm not going to name. Um, but yeah, come on, see me, and uh, I'll hook you up with a uh, with a really discounted uh, hit sketch on a on a cover. And you know, and if you were if anyone refers. Say that you got referred from this video, I'll give you 50% off your first commission. That's a great deal. 
Well, thank you very much, Mr. Brian. Yeah, man, it's my pleasure. Thanks for coming by and hanging out with us. Uh, it, it's, it, it's, got, it, it's people like you guys that come out and show the industry love that, that help us stay strong and make us want to come out. I, it's not about it's not all about the money. It's about it's about the community. It is about, it's about uh, shaking hands, meeting people, seeing smiles, and it, it's y'all coming out here and talking to us make, that makes us want to come out and be here more and more. So I can't say thank you enough for even sitting out here and talking to me. You took time out of your day to come do that, and we are, and if no one else in there said it, I will. Uh, we all do appreciate it. So thank you very much. Hi, right, brother.